Good morning, everybody. Um, can I thank the more than 102,000 people that came forward to get tested in the last 24 hours? That is a new record. Uh, and to have us pass that 100,000 mark on a weekend in a 24 hour period is outstanding. So thank you so much to everybody who came forward and got tested. Uh, New South Wales recorded 141 cases of community transmission uh, in that 24 hour period and 38 of those were infectious in the community. Uh, I wanted to also extend my condolences to two families who are grieving today. We had two deaths overnight, uh, a woman in her 70s, but also a woman in her 30s with no pre-existing conditions. So if anybody thinks this is a disease just affecting older people, please think again. Uh, our, again, I want to extend my heartfelt condolences to those families, their loved ones who are grieving today. Uh, but please note that younger people without pre-existing conditions can also fall victim to this cruel disease. I wanted to stress a couple of points this morning. Firstly, uh, please know that what will get us through this outbreak is a combination of our, of our restrictions, but also of more people being vaccinated. So can I urge everybody to come forward and vaccinated? As you know, the health advice has changed in the last few days. So everybody is welcome to come forward and get the AstraZeneca vaccine. And please know that whether it's through your GP, through a local pharmacist, or through obviously our New South Wales health hubs, uh, please come forward and get vaccinated. We know that in particular, older people are more vulnerable to this disease. And we're hoping already that more people come forward to get, to get the vaccine. But I can't stress enough how important it is to get vaccinated. One thing we also know with this cruel Delta strain, which is what we're dealing with, is that even one dose of the vaccine not only gives you personal protection, but it also reduces your chances of passing the disease on to others. And that's why during the Delta outbreak, higher vaccination rates, even of the first dose, slow the spread down. It won't stop the spread alone, but it will definitely, definitely slow the spread down. Instead of infecting your whole household, you may only affect a few people. Or instead of infecting your entire workplace, you may only infect a few people if you have at least one dose of the vaccine. And that's why it is so important to have that combination of restrictions and also higher vaccination rates. Please know in those five local government areas in particular that are impacted, we are doing all we can to increase uh, the vaccination rates, including providing vaccines through local pharmacists, through GPs and through our New South Wales health hubs. So please come forward to get vaccinated for your sake and the sake of those closest to you. That is what will get us through this outbreak combined with the restrictions uh, that we will put in place or have in place. Uh, in relation to yesterday's protest, uh, can I say how absolutely disgusted I was? It broke my heart. Millions and millions of people across our state are doing the right thing. And it just broke my heart that people had such a disregard for their fellow citizens. I just ask everybody to think about that. Each of those people who protested illegally, I'm sure have loved ones. They're gonna go home and risk passing that virus on to their most closest people to them. And I just urge everybody that we are making enormous inroads in other places around the world with similar populations and densities to ours. Case numbers would have been in the thousands and thousands. We've stopped that. And what we need to do now is reduce the number of people infectious in the community. And that is a challenge for all of us and a challenge we take jointly. And I just urge everybody to please do the right thing. Please follow the health advice. I know there are a lot of people out there, a lot of experts out there, uh, legitimate experts and so-called experts. But please know the New South Wales government is relying on the best medical advice we have in our nation and making sure we take decisions to protect all of us. And I personally, on behalf of the government, say we will always make decisions in the best interests of our citizens to keep everybody safe and to get us through this outbreak. So thank you to all of you doing the right thing. And to those of you that aren't, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Dr McAnulty will now give the health update and then uh, Deputy Commissioner Warboys will say a few words before we take questions. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Premier. I'll take you through the numbers of um, cases uh, from overnight from yesterday. New South Wales recorded 141 locally acquired cases until eight o'clock last night. 80 of, 87 of those locally acquired cases are linked to other cases in the cluster 
and 54 remain under investigation. There were no new locally uh, overseas acquired cases in the same period. There have now been 2,081 cases associated with this outbreak since the 16th of June 2021. And a record number of over 102,000 tests were done yesterday. So thanks very much to the community for coming forward to meet this challenge. By isolation status of the 141 cases, 65 were in isolation throughout their infectious period and 24 for part of their infectious period. 38 were infectious while in the community. Um, sadly, we've been notified of two deaths overnight, as the Premier has mentioned. Uh, uh, a, a woman in her late 30s uh, from the Sydney L CDB area had di has died and a woman in her 70s from southwest Sydney has died. These are very tragic events and our sympathies go out to their families, friends and loved ones. Um, there are a number of people in hospital. Um, 141 people are in hospital with COVID at present and 43 are in intensive care, 18 of whom require ventilation. So this is a very serious disease. Of those 141, 60 um, are under the age of 55 and 28 under the age of 35. And of the 43 people in intensive care, uh, one is in their teens, seven are in their 20s, three are in their 30s, 14 are in their 15s, and 12 are in their 60s, and six are in their 70s. So this is affecting people of all ages with very serious disease. All but one um, are vaccinated. One person has just received one dose of vaccine. By LGA, of the, most of the cases are in five LGAs. Um, Fairfield with 34, Canterbury-Bankstown with 30, Cumberland with 24, Blacktown with 19, and Liverpool with 12 cases. So we're still seeing concentration of cases in various LGAs, but cases elsewhere in the Greater Sydney area. So anybody in the Greater Sydney area um, is at uh, particular risk, but we're seeing cases in these particular LGAs. We're particularly concerned for people in certain suburbs to come forward for testing with, with even the mildest of symptoms. And I'll just go through those, those areas. On the north coast of New South Wales, Coffs Harbour and Byron Bay, we've seen uh, positive uh, sewerage in recent days in Byron Bay. Uh, in southern New South Wales, Mossvale, again, we've seen positive sewerage without a known case there. Uh, also, Goulburn and Maroolan, we're keen for people to be aware for symptoms and come forward for testing. In Western New South Wales, Orange. In Western Sydney, Cumberland, LGA, Merrylands and Guildford in particular. Toongabbie, Pendle Hill, Mount Druitt, Rooty Hill, Blacktown. In Northern Sydney, Belrose, where we've had transmission. In the Inner West, Lakemba, Roselands, Punchbowl, Wiley Park, Belmore, Burwood, Campsie, particularly Tong Lee Supermarket, Growers Market and TNL Butchers, where we've had transmission. In South West Sydney, of course, the Fairfield LGA, particularly Old Guildford, uh, Liverpool LGA, particularly Hoxton Park, Carnes Hill, Voyager Point, Canterbury Bankstown, Sefton, Yuguna, Chester Hill, and in Campbelltown, particularly Bardia. In South East Sydney, we're still worried about George's River, Bayside, Sutherland, Waverley, and Haymarket, and in Illawarra. Wollongong and Fort Kembla. If you're in any of those areas, please come forward for testing with even the mildest of symptoms. It's just so important. We're concerned about a particular gathering I mentioned yesterday in Pendle Hill. This is a grieving family who came together um, to support each other. We know at least 50 people were at that gathering and we've now got 28 cases associated with that gathering. So we've been working with community leaders in that area to make sure that people in that gathering are isolated and getting tested. It's so important to come forward for testing, but it's a measure of just how dangerous it is to come together from different family, families. Don't visit other family, don't visit other household. Don't let anyone from your extended family who doesn't live with you to come into your household. It's so important, even if you think it's, it's just not safe to do so. I've also been notified of a a uh, person who's now in Queensland who um, uh, had been on a flight uh, while knowing that there are a, a close contact. So we, uh, the person travelled on the 14th of July to Ballina from Sydney uh, on flight 
Virgin Flight VA1139 from Sydney to Ballina arriving at around 11.45. Anybody who was on this flight is a close contact must, must get tested and isolated for 14 days from the date of their exposure, regardless of the result of the test. So the flight manifest we've received and we're contacting all patients, all passengers directly. So we're aware of the person. He was tested positive on the, he was tested on the 12th of July following identification of a workplace exposure. He was advised for the close contact and to isolate for 14 days regardless of the test result. We understand he got a test result which was mistakenly provided by a private lab to inform him he was negative, um, but this didn't change the, the fact that he had to isolate for 14 days. On the 20th of July, we were advised that the swab was in fact positive and following a whole genome sequencing test, the case was immediately contacted and interviewed further that day. He stated, that been he stated that he had been isolating since the 10th of July. However, we know this is not true. We were believed to travel to Queensland on July 14 and concerned about the nature and extent of his exposures on the flight and in the community, both in New South Wales and Queensland. So we're working with our colleagues in Queensland Health and we referred the matter to the New South Wales Police. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you. Dr. McNulty, uh, Premier, 510 penalty infringement notices issued in the last 24 hours. The vast majority of those two people uh, whose behaviour yesterday uh, in and around Sydney uh, could only be described as violent, um, filthy behaviour, uh, risky behaviour, uh, that police will continue uh, to investigate. A strike force is set up uh, right at this moment uh, that continues to ask for uh, people to uh, bring forward any uh, video files or telephone footage that they have uh, of that sort of behaviour that was clearly um, not... Uh, the, the community has spoken, the community has said it's, they will not tolerate it. And we ask people to uh, upload those files, to upload any information that they have to Crime Stoppers, 1800 333 000, and the investigation into people's behaviour yesterday will continue uh, for some time. So I expect over the next few days uh, and perhaps weeks that that number of penalty infringement notices will continue to be high. Uh, what I would also like to say today is that uh, yesterday police were welcomed uh, much better behaviour uh, in and around distancing uh, and exercising on the beaches right uh, from north uh, down to south of Bondi. Uh, it was um, it was much, uh, much welcomed by police and indeed local council and everyone in and around there to be able to exercise uh, in a much less risky fashion. We want people to continue that, we want people to make good decisions and we want people to respect the public health orders and, and each and every person needs to understand that they have a part to play in where we head over the next days and weeks. The other thing that I wanted to call out today uh, was we still have people um, in particular in that Eastern Beaches area that want uh, to try and sell alcohol uh, to people that are exercising or, or going out of their home uh, to pretend to exercise and then consume alcohol. There are very strict guidelines in terms of alcohol-free zones, uh, particularly in the Waverley Council area. Uh, alcohol uh, is prohibited on the beach and in parks around the beach. Um, people need to understand that this is not a time uh, to make money uh, on the back of um, the public health orders and, and this state trying to get through the pandemic as best they can. What we would ask is clearly for those places that, uh, that have a licence, that they don't breach and infringe, uh, but most importantly, that they look at the spirit of uh, the actual orders and what they are doing is simply encouraging people uh, to break the public health orders. We want that to stop and police will continue to do business inspections. They will continue to work with uh, Crime Stopper reports uh, around businesses that want to draw people out of their houses to sell cocktails, to sell alcohol in plastic cups without lids, which is clearly designed to be consumed on the street. Thank you. Deputy Commissioner, while I've got you there, um, obviously one of the photos that, that galvanised this was the punching of the horse. Uh, what did you make of that, firstly? But also, how many police officers were assaulted yesterday? Yeah, well, fortunately, um, police come out of that confrontation um, well, obviously there were scratches and bruises, 
Uh, obviously, police were highly confronted, um, but they never took a backward step. Um, clearly, the behaviour was absolutely disgusting. Um, it will not be tolerated, not just by the police, but by the community. It's been overwhelming the support to police, and in particular, you reference um, uh, the police horse. Um, look, you know, that person has been charged with animal cruelty offences, with a fray and various other, other offences. Uh, again, overwhelmingly, there is not a person that supports um, that sort of dreadful behaviour. But what, I, but, what I, but what I will say is that at one o'clock, um, the police minister and Deputy Lanyon will stand up and they will have far more information to provide you. Could we Thank just you. ask you, please, sorry, can, can, did the size of the protest take, you, take police by surprise? Did it swell much quicker than you expected it to? No, look, not at all. I'm, I'm here as the SEACON the uh, today, but I'm well aware that uh, the police executive uh, and indeed all of uh, the, the intelligence around that, um, we've been working on that for, for weeks, weeks now, well over two weeks that I can recall. So, no, I don't think it took the police by surprise at all. Premier, on, in relation to the protest, um, Premier, we, I mean, there are fears that it could be a super spring event with so many people coming all together, but we won't know that for a while. Just the fact that it happened... Does that ex will, will that extend the lockdown that we are currently in? I think that's why all of us uh, were absolutely disgusted and disappointed yesterday, because we know that events like that can cause those super spreading events. And please know that all of the sacrifices we've made uh, over the last three or four weeks in particular have resulted in us being able to stabilise the growth in, in cases. We don't want to step back. And yesterday could have been a setback, time will tell. But I'm just so utterly disgusted, uh, disappointed and heartbroken that people don't consider the safety and well-being of their fellow citizens. Each of those people who illegally protested, I'm sure, have significant loved ones. How would they feel if they went home uh, in their day-to-day -day life and gave the disease to their loved ones? And as we've seen tragically overnight, this strain of Delta is not discriminating on age, on circumstance, on where you live. This is a horribly cruel disease, and that's why our response has been so strong against it. But we rely on people not only to do the right thing, but not to openly, openly threaten the health and safety of the broader community. I hope it won't put us, I hope it won't be a setback, but it could be. As Dr McAnulty said, unfortunately, a bereaving family uh, with the number of people coming to support them during bereavement, has seen 28 cases from that one incident. Uh, please know that we're doing remarkably well across the state in keeping the virus at bay, but it only takes a couple of incidents to cause these setbacks. Uh, I don't want to burden our citizens any more than we need to, but we also rely on each other to do the right thing, and can I say the vast majority of people have been overwhelmingly positive. To have more than 102,000 tests in the last 24 hours says to us people are not only listening but doing the right thing. And we know from the telephone calls we're getting through Service New South Wales that the vast majority of inquiries are around people not wanting to do the wrong thing. So the vast majority of our citizens are doing so well. But when all of us see the images we saw yesterday, we are just left shaking our heads and feeling so disgusted and let down. And I just ask everybody, don't let down yourself and your family. You might not care about the rest of us, but don't let down your family, your closest to you, because this disease doesn't discriminate. And how would you feel if because of your irresponsible and destructive actions, you gave the disease to your loved ones and they suffered and even died as a result? Premier, could I just give you and apologies, this is a longer question, so bear with me. We've had a target change the advice on AstraZeneca for people over the 18 years uh, of age. And you said yourself just a moment ago that even one dose uh, reduces transmissibility. Yeah. Um, so they are lower risk people in the community who are vaccinated. We really need to come forward for people to get vaccinated. And you said yourself many times in press conferences that that's our way out of this lockdown. Um, is it time to exempt vaccinated people from lockdowns, considering that that would also 
drive everyone into vaccination clinics to get vaccinated very quickly because they want that freedom as well. Yeah, can I say that in relation to um, providing additional uh, easing of restrictions or freedoms for vaccinated people, we can only consider that when a larger proportion of the population is vaccinated. Because we don't have those high rates of vaccination, that would still be too great a threat on everybody else who hasn't been vaccinated. And not everybody yet has had the opportunity to be offered the vaccine, and that health advice has now recently changed. But, Premier, even with countries that are, have high vaccination rates, the Delta variant is spreading through those countries. So is it time to just start the short answer is no, because we don't have those high rates of vaccination. We can't consider those policy decisions until we have high rates of vaccination. Because the point is that we need to firstly keep people out of hospital, which the vaccines do, and we also need to reduce the likelihood of spread, which even one dose of the vaccine does. So the vaccine not only keeps people out of hospital and keeps them alive, but it also reduces the chances of them spreading it on to more people. And that's why it is so key that alongside the restrictions we have, we need to increase the vaccination. And that gives us more options in the future. But, but can I just say, in relation to dealing with the immediate outbreak, we need a combination of the restrictions. And, and hopefully, in the future, the restrictions will change. Uh, but in addition to the restrictions, we also need high rates of vaccination, and that's why now I'm urging, given the recent health advice has changed from the Commonwealth, that everybody should come forward and get vaccinated. But especially, we know, those older are more vulnerable because their, their immune systems are weaker. So those older are more vulnerable. But what we're seeing now is the disease is indiscriminate. And if you have, haven't had the vaccine, you can succumb, even if you don't have any other underlying health conditions. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to any employer who recognises one of those people at the protest, would you advise those employers to call police or should those employees be told to stay at home? I would definitely recommend, if anybody recognises anybody at the protest, contact Crime Stoppers. Uh, police uh, not only were vigilant yesterday, but I've had advice from police that they will be vigilant in the next week. They will chase down anybody who did the wrong thing and make sure that they're held to account. completely doing the wrong thing, but there's a handful of those people that do feel let down, that do feel like they have no other choice. Do you feel that the federal government should step in? Do we need JobKeeper? Are you going to help those people from Western Sydney? Is the government going to do something? Can I say, whenever you take any decision in public life, let alone in a pandemic, you're going to have people who are disappointed and feel frustrated. But that is the nature of society. You're never going to have 100% of people always uh, supporting what you're doing. But please know our government has made the decisions we have and is doing what we are based on the best advice we have and based on what we know will keep our community safe and help us get through this outbreak. And I appreciate um, that some people are feeling frustrated, but that is no reason, absolutely no reason, for those actions yesterday. No excuse, I'm sorry. Because uh, all of us are doing it tough. Every person in this state, one way or another, has had to make sacrifices. I don't know a single person uh, in New South Wales or Australia that hasn't had to change their life or go through hardship we never thought we'd have to go through before. And those people that protested are no different. But don't, don't release your frustration in that way. It will only make things worse and it will only reduce our ability to make sure we deal with the outbreak as quickly as we Premier, can. People are falling, people are falling through the cracks, Premier. Oh, look, can I, yeah, can I stress and make this point that we fought really hard to get the financial support that we have available, uh, and uh, not only for individuals who are doing it tough, but also uh, for businesses who are doing it tough. And also, um, in those five local government areas in particular, we'll be providing special local support through their community leaders, in addition to the financial support that's already available. So nobody should feel that they're going to be left behind. Quite the contrary. Uh, we are here to support, and if there's more we need to do, we will. But that is no excuse for people who are just looking for an excuse to come out and protest. But Premier, people are falling through the cracks. Sorry, people... Ashley hasn't asked a question. Just aside from the protest, I think there is a sense that some people are, are falling through the cracks. Even uh, the Treasurer, Dominic Perrottet, ha has acknowledged that today. Are you going to 
do, do more, like talk to the federal government and do more talk about JobKeeper and also um, the, the loophole around people who are on some benefits, even students, you know, they can't access those disaster payments if they had a casual job on the side as well as study. You know, are, are you going to look at these things? Oh, look, absolutely. We don't want anyone to feel that they're being left behind or falling through the cracks. And we are here to support every single citizen during this time. What uh, we want to do is make sure we're supporting all groups in society who might feel they're being left behind or falling through the cracks, because that will allow us to put our best decisions forward in getting rid of this outbreak and having us resume a no normal COVID existence uh, beyond the lockdown. So it's in all of our interests, and the government completely acknowledges that we don't want anyone left behind. And if there are classes of citizens, we are having conversations with the federal government on an ongoing basis, let me assure you of that. We are working hard behind the scenes, but also making sure that whatever additional support we provide is targeted to make sure that people don't feel left behind, aren't left behind, and that nobody falls through the cracks. But I also want to stress that if you are concerned about your wellbeing, if you're concerned about not understanding where you can go to help, uh, obviously Service New South Wales uh, is available 24 seven, but also um, go contact a community leader or somebody you trust. If you can't or don't know how to access through Service New South Wales or Services Australia, go through somebody you trust because not only are we making sure we provide information through those traditional channels, but we're also going very grassroots. Um, and I want to thank the community leaders, especially in those five local government areas. They have been absolutely amazing helping us make sure that we are directly in touch with people who need the help the most even if that means getting support and assistance through different methods that we've done before. And I just say to everybody um, listening today or, at, or, or friends or family that you know might be disconnected or concerned, um, if you don't know how to get to or can't get through Service New South Wales, contact a community leader. We're making sure information is available in, in many channels. And please know that we won't leave anybody behind. We're trying our hardest to make sure that all the support we provide is very targeted. And we also ask people for, for their patience, but please know that we're working really hard to make sure not only that uh, we put the right settings in place, but also that we provide people with the financial support they need to get them through this Premier, you're time. already you're already stumping up the bill for people outside of Sydney in the regions um, who are not eligible for the federal government's COVID-19 disaster mm -hmm. payment. Will you pay for people who are ineligible for that payment because they are receiving other benefits like parental leave, pension part payments, youth allowance, people who have lost hours because of the lockdown but are ineligible for the COVID-19 disaster payment. Will you pay for that? Well, look, we're looking at all those opportunities. We're looking at um, groups of people or individuals who might inadvertently have been left out or feel they're left behind. Uh, we're going to pursue all opportunities to provide more assistance. And remember, alongside the federal government's $1 billion package, we put in $4 billion. So please know our state government is putting the health and wellbeing of our citizens first and foremost. That is our priority. And uh, we're in this together and we'd we mean that. And that means providing support to, to classes of citizens who might feel they're being left behind. Premier, 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 Premier. Um, what will you be doing in terms of getting first doses into people in southwestern Sydney? Will you be delaying second doses? Will people's appointments be cancelled or delayed? Well, please know that the revision of the federal health advice around AstraZeneca is, is important. Uh, in South Western Sydney in particular, we have community pharmacists that are now ready and willing to provide AstraZeneca. We have New South Wales health hubs in additional spots that can provide AstraZeneca. So whilst um, our doses of Pfizer are limited, uh, we have sufficient AstraZeneca for people who want to get the vaccine. And so I'm urging everybody to come forward. We have additional pop-ups and hubs across southwestern Sydney, whether it's GPs, pharmacists, New South Wales health hubs. And we're also providing and will provide opportunities to outreach into community locations where people feel comfortable in coming forward and getting the vaccine. And again, I want to thank community leaders for their input into that process. So you will see in coming weeks, more opportunities at a very grassroots level, targeted uh, at work sites, at various other places where community members are used to going to provide that opportunity. So I urge everybody to come forward and get vaccinated. It doesn't matter what, how old you are, but especially those, uh, in those, those citizens in those five local government areas who have to leave the area for work. They might be in aged care, they might be um, working in other parts of the healthcare system. 
uh, or, or else uh, driving the vital food supplies, which nobody else can do. So we're urging everybody to come forward and get vaccinated. And even if you've been vaccinated, please contact your loved ones, check on them, ask them whether they've been vaccinated. Even one dose uh, protects them against severe disease, but also protects everybody else because the transmissibility, their, their ability to spread it um, more readily is, is vastly reduced. Premier, I think you've answered this question already. Sorry, I'll just ask those yep. and come back to you. Yep. Sort of mentioned that over the weekend into the coming days we'll have we'll have some indication of what where we're going to go into New South Wales. Obviously, your plea for uh, more vaccines from the other states has been knocked back. I note the AstraZeneca changes, but but for the peoples, people in, in lockdown, are, are we going to see those extended beyond Friday? We're going to see schools come back. Any indication? Yeah, thank you. Um, obviously, in the next few days, the New South Wales government will be doing some critical uh, planning around what life beyond July 31 looks like. But I want to stress to our citizens that we will always strive to get the right balance. Our first priority is to keep the community, of course, safe and healthy. But our priority also is to provide any level of freedom that we can where and when it's appropriate. So we will be looking at all those issues. But please know that had we not made those difficult decisions we did in the last few weeks, we literally would have had thousands and thousands of cases today and more deaths. We know we've prevented that escalation in cases. We know we've prevented deaths. But we want to do more so we can live more freely until we have a huge proportion of our population vaccinated uh, in coming months. And that is, that is the challenge for us. But I am, you know, I remain ever hopeful and I really want to stress this message. I have confidence in the people of our state, not only to do the right thing, but also to follow us and be with us as partners in this journey. And I have absolute confidence that uh, in the coming weeks, all of us will see the fruits of the sacrifices that we've put forward, but also the opportunities we have uh, to lead the way in living a life uh, alongside COVID, which is much freer and much safer than what we've lived in the past. Premier, the measures that you announced last Saturday, they were designed to bring the number of cases and infections in the community down. When you announced them, you said that we'd see the impact of that by effectively today. They haven't worked, have they? Well, I completely disagree with that statement. Because imagine if we'd had hundreds of thousands of people mobile in the last week, the, the rate of disease would have been through the roof. But and that, they were designed and to bring case numbers down, weren't they? Obviously, obviously, all of us want to see less case numbers. But please know that every time someone leaves the home, that is a threat of spreading the virus. The fact that we prevented hundreds of thousands of people mixing with each other, leaving home, uh, mixing at workplaces has seen us manage to stabilise the rate of the spread. Now, we need to do more. All of us need to do more. However, uh, please, uh, please note that to date, the fact that we don't have thousands of cases today, and all you need to do is look at other examples around the world, where cities, where states, where, where nations have lost complete control, have thousands and thousands of cases a day with much higher vaccination rates than what we have here in New South Wales. With our relatively low vaccination rates, we've still been able to limit the number of cases. And for that, all of us do, you know, need to look upon this as a, as a positive sign. With low rates of vaccination, uh, we've managed to keep the disease at bay, but we need to do more in terms of our settings and the rates of vaccination, which is why I'm urging now, based on the newest health advice, please come forward and get vaccinated, everybody, all adults. Everybody over the age of 18 should come forward and get vaccinated. Even one dose will help you, not only in keeping you out of hospital, but also prevent you from spreading the disease to everybody around you. It actually reduces the rate of what we call transmission or the level of contagiousness in vast amounts. Premier, can I just get a quick comment on, on the local government elections yeah. being uh, postponed until December 4? Sorry? Could I just get a comment on the local government elections being again postponed oh, until December 4? Yeah, I think that's a sensible uh, decision and gives, provides people certainty. Just in relation to, could I actually have to, in a, in a second, uh, Dr McAnulty, would you be able to clarify, I think you might have misspoken before about the number of people in ICU that were or weren't vaccinated. Could you just clarify that stat out loud for everybody at home? Thank you. Yes, I think I misspoke before. So of the 43 people in intensive care units, uh, 42 have not been vaccinated. One person had just one dose of vaccine. Incomplete vaccine. Thank you. Uh, sorry, thank you. And could I ask about the gentleman who went to Queensland? Uh, 
how, oh, I don't know how, the Okay, that's fine. Yeah. How, how, like, obviously, you said that we're looking at the amount of exposure sites, but is there a chance, you know, that we might need to see lockdowns in the north of this state as a result of that person? Do we know how much uh, exposure they've had outside? So, so we understand the person had some exposures in Sydney, which we're calling out, and also on the flight, but we understand they went directly from the airport into Queensland. So we've been working very closely with Queensland to make sure that we've identified all those places. So as you can imagine, we're very concerned about this. We're following up those passengers directly and urge people to get tested and isolate until 14 days after they've been, um, been exposed, and regardless of the test result. It's a big risk and it's just a, a, a reminder just how important it is if you're a close contact or a casual contact, follow the health advice. You must not just stay at home, you must isolate, you mustn't expose other people, you can't, you can't go, it is just such a dangerous thing to do. And the, you know, the other reminder for all of us, if we're not close contacts, is stay at home. You know, that's the only way we can battle this is by not mixing with other people. Keep your distance from other people. Don't go visiting other people's houses. I'm looking very strong on saying construction will resume on July 31. Is that still your plan, given the rising numbers? Uh, we always said that some construction activity will resume uh, on July 31, and that remains the case. But Previously, you've said it couldn't be staged because that would be too confusing. So you're now saying it might be more staged, smaller numbers no, on I've, sites, or what I've said previously. Uh, what I've said previously still remains the case. What about Pfizer? The actual timeline, similar uh, to Alex's question, the difference between. I'm sorry, James. I didn't hear the first bit of the question. The time between first and second dose. Yeah. Have you actually been cancelling people's second dose bookings? and extending it out? We've not done any of that at this stage, um, but uh, obviously there was revised advice from the federal authorities regarding the AstraZeneca vaccine. So now we can urge everybody to come forward and get vaccinated. And look, I've made my case strongly to the Commonwealth, to the other states. Uh, I will never give up advocating for the citizens of New South Wales, but we also have to be real in what's available to us and make the most of what's been made available to us. And on that basis, I just want to urge everybody to come forward and get tested. Um, I'm proud, so proud of New South Wales Health and our GP network. Our GP network are vaccinating literally hundreds of thousands of people every month. And as far as New South Wales Health is concerned, remember when we were told we weren't needed? Well, now we have capacity, we will have capacity to vaccinate around 350,000 people every week. And I'm proud of that. We'll continue to do that. And I just urge all citizens not to be scared come forward and get vaccinated. We're a stage now in the outbreak where we want to stop the spread, get those numbers down, but also live as freely as we, and safely as we can. So I want to urge everybody, based on the health advice, which is that all adults can come forward and get vaccinated. You wouldn't have been surprised, though, that the other states knocked back your request for more Pfizer doses, given that just last month you said that we couldn't give our Pfizer, when New South Wales couldn't give its Pfizer to Victoria. Uh, well, I'm not sure what comments you're referring to, but the on bottom line... Well, the bottom line is that here in uh, New South Wales, we have the highest population. Uh, we've done the lion's share in bringing home Australians from overseas on behalf of all the other states. And we've all also always advocated to keep our internal Australian borders open. And you know, New South Wales has carried a lot during the last 18 months. I appreciate uh, what the other states have said. I appreciate what the federal government has said. But I say this, that uh, we will always do what's in the best interest of our citizens. We'll always make the best of what we have. And that's why I'm urging everybody, please come forward and get, get tested. And please know that the testing sites not only have increased, but pharmacists are on board, GPs are on board, uh, community leaders are engaged at a very grassroots level. Work sites uh, have been engaged and will be engaged further in coming weeks. So the quicker we get first doses at least in people's arms, we know the less chance the spread will continue and the greatest chance we have of really um, getting through this outbreak and moving forward. Just on, just on the, sorry, just on, the, just on the numbers. Obviously, you said last week that we wanted to see the results of the harsher lockdown by the weekend. Now, numbers, uh, the case numbers have gone up. Obviously, testing rates have gone up too. But what should people make of the numbers? They're not coming down. So I think a lot of people at home are feeling we're going to be in indefinite lockdown. What should people make of these numbers? No, I wouldn't make that assumption. Uh, but what I would say is this, is what we've managed to do also, which is encouraging, is not have major outbreaks all throughout Greater Metropolitan Sydney. We've been able to limit the locations. Yes, there are cases here and there, and all of us have to be vigilant, no matter where we live. Every time you set foot outside the house, you have to think about what you're doing. 
But the fact that we've seen it contained in particular local government areas gives us heart that the strategies we've put in place are working. And unfortunately, a lot of pay people who have, a, have got the virus or unintentionally have spread the virus have been what we call authorised workers, people in aged care, people who are doing those tasks that all of us rely on. So what we have now is better line of sight on what we need to target, what we need to focus on. And this is invaluable information for us moving forward. So I say to people, uh, please know that our learnings and what we've been through in the last few weeks is bearing serious fruit. And I just ask anybody to look anywhere else in the world. With Our vaccination rates are pretty low compared to other places in the world, and yet we've kept the virus at bay. And for that, everybody should take heart. And please take heart that you have a government that is here to make the decisions that are in the best interests of our citizens. And as I've said before, it does not bother me personally what people think of myself or the government, because we will do what is best for our citizens. And that is the only thing that will motivate us uh, moving forward. And please know that I know there's a lot of commentary and a lot of experts out there, but the experts we rely on have kept us safe all this time, have kept people alive and well. And our challenge now is to live as freely as possible whilst we're going through these difficult times. Last question, sorry. Last question, sorry. Yep. Thank you. There's one more protest or another protest that is planned for next week. Are you going to bring in the military? Is that something that you might look at? I might get the Deputy Commissioner Warburg. There's no reason. There's no, um, there's no suggestion or talk at all that the Australian Defence Force um, will be needed to supplement uh, New South Wales Police. Um, over 17,000 police officers across this state, um, well trained, highly agile, they'll be moved to wherever they're needed. Um, we would simply say to people that on the back of what occurred yesterday, have a good hard look at yourself and just see whether um, the similar, a similar event next week would, um, uh, would would really further your cause. The, the community of New South Wales right across and uh, across states have viewed the vision of what occurred yesterday and it's quite clear that everyone is disgusted in the behaviour and they really need to rethink their strategies.